Hi there, Jamie Keat here today at Teachers Tech. Hope you're having a great day today. Today I want to give you nine different websites or web applications that can really help you level up your online teaching. Maybe you're using a few of these already. Maybe uh, you want to dig a little bit deeper in them. So I'll go through these, give you a little bit of tips on them, but I also do have uh, tutorials on these ones that I'll put down below in the description below. In, in the top right hand corner, you'll see that card that you can click on that will get to them too. So let's get started with these nine websites to help you level up your online teaching teaching. Now first, I want to go over some video conferencing tools. And we're going to start with something by Google. If you're part of a Google organization, like a business or a school, you should check out Google Meet if you haven't already. You're going to find it just in your app launcher up top and it looks like this. And it's very quick to get started. Now I'm just gonna go, in this case, start a practice demo one. So I'll hit demo, continue, and I'm gonna join right away. And you can see I actually have an effect, a virtual effect uh, in some of my tutorials. I will show you how to do this. Uh, but for this, you can quickly just hit join now. You do have some other options. You can present your screen. But as soon as you go join now, you can share out your phone, you can add people to this, and they're gonna be invited to this. So this is a super easy way to do video conferencing. There's extensions and add-ons that you can do so you can see all your participants. The Google admin can lock it down further if you want to have more security. But they are also doing lots of updates coming up where it's gonna be connected in your Gmail and other things too. So I would suggest take a look at Google Meet. Like I said, I have tutorials down uh, below that will show you how to dive deeper into using this effectively with your uh, classes. But that's my first tip here is check out Google Meet. Number two is Microsoft Teams. So if you're part of a Microsoft organization, this is definitely something to take a look at, uh, not only video conferencing, but for organizing everything for your classes or teams. Now I'm just on the main page right here of Microsoft Teams, and you can see where you can sign up for free or get your school signed up for free. But if I go over to my Office 365 account and just look at my apps, I have Teams right here. So I'm online when I'm going into my Microsoft Teams, but you can also download this as an app uh, for this. You can check at the bottom of the corner where you can download the desktop app, and usually that's what I work off of, and you can see where you can download the app here. This works all mobile and everything uh, too. But you can create your Teams. If I go to one of my Teams here, just let me click on my Teams, and I'm gonna go to this one. You can, uh, inside your general post, and everything uh, and I do take a look at the tutorial I have on this to dive in deeper but you can go ahead and meet online so if I go meet now you'll see I have my camera open here uh, and I can do so many things in this too. So if you're, I, I like all the options that you have to share in here because if I go to share, uh, I can share PowerPoints. I have a whiteboard uh, built into this and they're adding more features so, so you can see more people at once and Microsoft with their security and privacy, it is at a very high level. So not only just check out the video conferencing part of Microsoft Teams, do check out everything else you can do uh, with the communications from chat uh, to the assignments to sharing files. There's so many things that this can do. So if Google or Microsoft isn't gonna work for you for your video conferencing, take a look at Zoom. Now they've been doing a lot of updates with their security uh, and privacy issues that they've had. And if you look at this, Zoom is removing the 40 minute time limit for basic free account for K to 12 schools. But you can still use this if you're just looking for a free video conferencing. Uh, you can take a look at this and you can get 40 minutes uh, for your meetings for free. but. K to 12, they're changing that. I'm just gonna get logged into Zoom here and show you a little bit around. I'm logged into my Zoom account, but if you don't have a Zoom account, it just takes seconds to make. Uh, I like how you can create breakout rooms within here. Uh, take a look at the tutorials that I have. I'll go deeper into that. I can join a meeting, host a meeting with video on, off, screen share only. I'm gonna go ahead and just go with video on. 
Now at this point, you do need to, if it's your first time putting on, you would have to download it uh, and install the app on your computer. But after that, it will quickly just go through, join with computer audio. I'm gonna turn my video on here and uh, keep myself muted. But if I just go full screen here, you can see all the different things that you can do at the bottom right across here. Now you can manage your participants in here. You can invite. So from here, I could go and uh, just deep send them an email. They'll get a link from, uh, from it or I could copy the URL. They click on the link and then I just have to accept them into the meeting. We have all our different options with our screen share. We have our chats and we also uh, have our breakout rooms. I didn't make any in here yet, but I do like that option inside Zoom where you can kind of go around and check out what's happening in each room. But now with the free for uh, for educators K to 12, they took off that 40 minute uh, time limit, which makes this very attractive to use. Remember, all the apps that I've showed you so far, they're mobile friendly, so people can uh, do everything on their phone to connect also with you, just like Google Classroom. So this is a great place that you can keep all your assignments and your uh, materials in one place to easily manage online. I'll just click on this demo right here, and you can break this into streams where you can communicate, where you can be posting questions or videos or material right through here that all your students will get. You have classwork where you can break it through to your resources depending on uh, do you want to break it down by subjects and then you can add material to each one. Quickly add all your students in here even email guardians from here and if you click on this you can see how you can email a student and communicate with them and if you click on their name you can dive deeper into different assignments that they have and see which ones they have done or haven't done. We have grades in here if you're using uh, that uh, format to keep track of everything. Again, it's all in one place. And then if I go back to the very uh, beginning of the stream, and you can actually, if I go back to all my classes, take a look at this one, I've turned on Google Meet. It will give a Google Meet a place where you guys can meet virtually just by clicking accessing this link for this Google Classroom. So do take a look if you're a Google school, if this is free uh, to use, it's a great place to put everything uh, in to, to communicate with parents and your students. Flipgrid is an excellent way for uh, for you to hear students' voices online. Now, with this, you can see you can sign up for free. Right from here, if there was a question already posted, you could enter a flip, uh, flip code. Now, I'm just gonna go into my account just to give you a brief explanation, but again, check out the tutorials to learn more about this. You would create a new topic, and then if I go in, I'm just gonna go into an example one uh, here, you can go and create uh, record a response. So if I could do an intro, if I go ahead and click on record response, make sure if it's your first one, you allow the camera uh, access to your camera and your mic on this one. But I can record myself here asking the students a question and then they respond in video. They can do this on their phone or the computer and then other students can respond to those responses. And you can control it uh, depending on how much security you wanted and if what you want to see from other students and how they can see uh, other students' responses too. Uh, but you have some options you can see for fun, whether there's filters, you can add text to the video. And there's video options. They have a beta with the screen recording. So if there's something on your screen you wanna record, or do you have a video already created that you could just upload from it, but it's a fun way to post a question to your students and then you can track all the data of, you can see where people are responding to. So do take a look at the tutorial that I created uh, that dives a bit deeper into uh, Flipgrid. This is an excellent way to hear from the students.
So now I want to move over to screen recorder. So I'm going to give you some free options here and some of these you can pay for an upgrade to get a few more options, but I think they work uh, great uh, for free ones. Now with this one, the first of all is Screencastify and all this is is going to be an extension. You need to use Google Chrome for this. You can already see that it's already installed and when you go to screencastify.com, just click on it and it will uh, go through to the Chrome store and install it. But it's right up top here. It's this little guy that's gets installed. So if I go and click on this right now, I'm already logged in and I do have the unlimited one and there's special uh, discounts for education and everything too. But the free one I think works great. The main thing is that with a free one you can only uh, record five minutes at a time. But if you piece together your recordings, uh, that can work great too. But all you need, you can see I have different options. I can go ahead and hit record. Uh, I can size this depending on how big I want this and I have everything ready do I want to I'll just record this and hit share so right now I uh, oops, it's counting down so now it's recording I can go through and do some options do I want uh, to hide the cursor do I want to darken it you can see as I bring it through how it gives the effect I can do some annotating on top of this I can use the eraser but I'm gonna go ahead and stop the sharing now so it goes from this point here and you'll get this where you can do some extra stuff to this you can uh, trim the ends if you drag these scissors back in and what I like about this you could hit save the trim what I like about this, you have your quick share options to classroom, to publish on YouTube, to the embed code, and your download options. You can export this as an MP4 or audio only, or get the uh, shareable link. This saves a copy right into your Google Drive that you can get the shareable link and share it that way too. But take a look at Screencastify. I have a more detailed tutorial down below. Just click the link. Loom.com. This is one I really like and I use this quite a bit. Uh, sometimes other teachers or people I work with will ask for a question, especially if I'm working from home and have to send a video and I want to screen share. Uh, this is a great way. So this is free again for educators in response to the COVID-19. They've made this free for educators and students. Uh, so make sure to take advantage of that. But I'm going to go get logged into my Loom. I'm just going to log in with my account here and once you're in it's super easy to use so I can go ahead if I want to record something I can go ahead and hit new video I can do a full desktop screen cam you can see there I am appearing uh, here and I can change the size of this one and you can see there's going to be different options uh, through here and when I'm ready to go I can just hit start recording uh, you can either run from a Chrome extension or it's a download on your computer but I can pick uh, the application window or the entire screen so if I was picking this I'm just going to hit share and it will count down uh, to through here and when I'm all done, and I'm just gonna do a short one here, uh, just for an example, I'm just gonna hit stop sharing here. Uh, you have these different uh, videos. So in this case, all you would have to do is copy this link and send it to people. So you can see this was the... And when I'm all done, and I'm just... That was what I just recorded, and I know I didn't set it up very well, but if I go ahead and copy this link and just send it to somebody, they will get they can just view it that quickly and it actually shows me if people clicked on it uh, that they were watching it so this is a great way i'd really recommend this one since it's free really easy to use you can see i can actually trim put call to actions custom thumbnails and a lot more on this so take a look at loom just go to loom.com Adobe Spark. Now this is a great way to share things online. It's great for you to create stuff for your students or for your students to create things to hand in to you. You can create so many different things. You can see from all these different uh, setups that they have on templates, collages, web page, slideshows, presentations, uh, social media posts, and other things. We can search for templates up in here based on uh, topics and you can start from these. And this is what I, I like it when students can start or even myself, 
I can start from uh, uh, from templates because it saves so much time. But when you're ready to go, even if you want to go from blank, uh, I'll go for an example, this portfolio one, and I'm just going to show you how this works really quickly. I have some videos uh, coming up that will break down uh, the Adobe Spark here too. So make sure you stay posted. But in this case, I can, do I want to promote an idea? Tell what's happening, a hero's journey, show and tell. If I go through and let's say we'll promote an idea, if I pick this one, it's going to set up the slides in a way that it will walk the person through and it even has these tips that will come up. I'm just going to close this down. But it walks through and helps uh, the student put together, you can see from setting to problem, to what could it what could be to solution idea so that they don't forget anything and then on each of these this is where they can upload a video uh, they could upload it they could add some text they could add a photo they could add an icon we have time limits on here we can describe so they can use their own voice on here uh, we have options to preview it to share it to download it here and if you uh, if you're not using the free one you can collaborate with other people quickly change layout so if you wanted a uh, split screen we have themes we can uh, choose from uh, just by clicking and you'll be able to see how quickly they can change the colors of any of these uh, themes we can resize for square or widescreen and we can even add music so it makes it a great way to create presentations for so many different things like where I showed you from websites to collages to videos it's fun and it's easy to use. So my last suggestion today is to start a YouTube channel and that's what I did about five years ago. I was sharing videos out to my students and it grew from there to helping uh, teachers and so on and I'm still creating videos but you can have a YouTube channel up and running with everything set in about 20 minutes or if you already have a personal channel maybe create a branded account just going up to your icon going to your settings and then you can see add or manage your channels you can create a channel right from there and go through and put up your channel art, uh, get in some uh, uh, stuff of information that you want to have written about your YouTube channel so people know what they're gonna find. But I do have a detailed tutorial to make sure that you don't uh, forget any of the setup stuff. Just click on the link that I have down below in the description and I'll walk you uh, through setting up your YouTube channel. It's so easy to share videos out that way. You can do it from unlisted where only the people will see the videos uh, that you give the link or you can keep it public if you want to so you have some options how you want to share it you have options of live streaming uh, makes a great way to uh, communicate with your students and easy on their phone to uh, watch it for them they're consuming so much YouTube already so I hope you like these nine suggestions today these nine websites most of them uh, can be used for free depending on what your organization how it's set up from it or they do have free versions or some of them have upgrades to it too let me know what other things you're using uh, down in the uh, comments down below I'm always looking for new ideas to help people with creating more videos thanks for watching teachers tech this week I'll see you next time with more tech tips and and tutorials.